This video is a guide on how to ground pound in War Thunder, teaching you advanced controls on how to set up your own private server against bots. Hope you guys enjoy this traditional intro, featuring bombs, unguided rockets and guided munitions. All of the things I'll be teaching you how to use. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. This is a tutorial on how to do close air support. Now I will chapter this video in its entirety to make it easier for you to navigate to the type of close air support that you want to learn. But before we get to the bombs, rockets and missiles, I'm going to go over some universal things. This will include things like controls and how to set up an offline server so you can practice against bots. And then I'll go in depth on how to practice all three different types of close air support. Now we'll cover bombs first, then we'll move on to rockets, and then of course, guided munitions. But first, let's cover the basics of flight. So first of all, we're gonna cover our controls. Now I'll link my own control setup in the description below, and you can use mine if you want. First of all, I got my throttle axis set to my mouse wheel. I don't often use this unless I'm in quite an intense dogfight. My mouse wheel multiplier is set to 10%, so I can just use little increments. But I mainly use my throttle and my W and S keys, and that's just because I'm a boomer, and that's the forward and back keys I'm always used to. Our roll axis is set to A and D, and this will of course control the roll rate of our plane. And my pitch axis is one of the most important things that you need to learn when you're keyboard flying. I use control and shift for mine. And once we get into the actual flight tutorial, you'll see why this is so important. Your axis is going to be a rudder, which I've set to Q and E. This will be very, very important when it comes to outstalling enemies and doing hammerhead maneuvers. Rudder turning is one of the most powerful things you can do in certain planes, so it's very important to have easy access to these. Now, the next important control next to your elevator is going to be in your common controls, and you're going to go to mouse look activation. Now, you can set this to a mouse button if you like, but I'm just so used to C now that I've just stuck with it. This will allow you to free look around your plane and use your keyboard to fly, allowing you to look at targets and also avoid incoming fire and direct the direction of your plane wherever you want it to go. Other controls that are going to be important for us is the toggle flaps button. F is probably the best key for you and it is for me too. I also have my flaps down option here which will go beyond combat flaps and go to your landing and takeoff flaps in order to give you a better turn rate. And of course we have our air brake which is very important if you're in a dive bomber and their gear as well. And one last very important thing you want to switch off is go back into your controls to your instructor and make sure this is set to no. What this will do if you're low level flying is constantly fight your elevator and it is going to be really annoying. Now we're going to back out and go to our options and go to air battle settings. This here is the option for autopilot for gunner and bombsight modes. I've got that set to no but this might be personal preference to you. What this does is it takes control of the flight of your aircraft in autopilot and it can really throw you off sometimes. Now as well as that we've also got fuel indication, ammo indication and temperature indication. I've got them set to always because you really always want to see those. You can also customize the colors of enemies and friendlies in order to suit your preferences. Okay now that our controls are set up I'm going to bring up my keyboard and mouse overlay and I'm going to show you how to use your C key. Once you have your C key held down we can look around the battlefield 
This is particularly useful when you're looking for targets like this guy down here. And what we can do is we can use our E and our shift key to now bring us around back to the battlefield while we hold our C key in. Now this will be quite daunting at first if you haven't got used to it, <laughs> but now that my C key is pressed in and I'm holding it continually, that means that I can just use my keyboard to fly around the battlefield without actually using my mouse at all to take control of my plane. This is actually particularly smooth in scenarios like this, because as soon as I let go of my C key and I use my mouse to fly me around, we'll do all sorts of things that I don't want it to do, like fly towards the ground. So once we've established an enemy, we can keep locked onto him, we can zoom in anywhere we like, and I can use my throttle key to pitch me up, and of course I can get myself into a position using my shift key and the combination with my C key and my mouse movements in order to keep this enemy tracked and locked up. And whenever I'm ready to attack with cannons, I can let go as many rounds as I want and then pull back off again using my mouse. Using the C key again to look behind me. The best way to practice this is to find a target and fly around it until you get used to this type of control. This is probably the most important thing to learn about doing close air support is learning to keyboard fly and keeping an eye on your surroundings whenever you're kind of remotely flying with your left hand or your right hand if you're left handed. Now one last thing before we move on, I'm going to teach you how to use your keyboard elevator to take you out of a dive. Now if you end up going particularly fast in a steep dive, it can take too long for you to move your mouse to the top of the screen if your sensitivity is too low, but if you hit your shift key the plane will just do it for you and then that way you're not wasting valuable seconds in trying to move your mouse to the top of the screen in order to get your plane to pitch up. Okay, now we've covered the controls and the basics of flight, we're gonna start our own server. It's actually a very easy thing to do, all you need to do is go to battles and custom battles, you just want to create a session, pick a map that you prefer and make sure you've got all your settings matched up here. Now I'm going to change the bot ranks on purpose just so they're a little bit heavier and harder to kill. That way it's easier for me to practice. I'm also going to increase the amount of bots that are in the game to around about 36. And I'm going to put a password in too. Just make sure that everything here matches and you should be okay. Now I'm going to hit apply. You can of course invite friends into this server as well if you'd like. Just hit ready and then start. Okay, now we're in the server, we're going to select our bomb load. I'm going to take this one in particular just because we've got two separate bomb drops. I'm also going to put ground target bills in here just in case I decide that I want to try and strafe some tanks on the ground too. Make sure your gun target distance and your vertical targeting is in your preferred place. And I usually use 1.5 seconds or 1 second for my fuse timer for the bomb. Once that's all set up the way you like, we're going to head into battle. So, now we're in the game, we can just go ahead and look for a target to bomb. You can as well, whenever you're getting there, you can just practice doing your keyboard flying. I'm going to bring up my keyboard mouse overlay. You can see here as well that you can use all multiple different keys in different ways in order to maneuver your plane without actually using your mouse at all to aim where the plane is going. Now if you do get yourself in a scenario where you spot an enemy aircraft up in the air, you of course can let go of C and you can use your mouse to then aim and shoot down the enemy. But there's many many different ways in order to fly, but all we are doing today is just dropping some bombs on enemies on the ground. So I can already see some enemies down here. The bots always like to kind of cluster up and make things easy for you. I want to try and pick a moving target here to make things difficult. I want to just come off my throttle a little bit. I know the bots don't generally tend to spawn SPAA, so I'm not going to be worried about that. I can see this guy moving on to the objective, so this is the dude I'm going to go after. So I'm using my C key to keep an eye on where he's going, not taking my eyes off him at any point in time. I'm using my keyboard to line up the shot. Now I'm just purely mouse aim. I'm going to let go of my bombs and we're going to pull off. He's driven right on top of them. So that's the best way to approach the bomb and run from. Whenever I pull back up again, I always make sure I look towards the enemy's air spawn. Have a wee look on the ground to see if there's any SPAs. And then we're going back in for another dive. After this pass, I'll show you how to lead your target best and how not to pancake into the ground. Now you'll see after you've dropped your bombs there'll be a little timer in the top right that tells me right now that it's uh, 3 minutes 40 seconds. What we can do is there's no punishment just for leaving your plane and spawning in another one. 
Okay, now we're finally back in. I'm going to give you guys some tips in order to drop your bombs pretty accurately. So step one is, you really want to keep your speed up pretty high. Keep your altitude as much as you can. Unless there's a teammate that you know is in a lot of trouble. And it could be a matter of the game being lost. Then put your nose down and go straight for whoever you need to bomb. But in our case, we've got plenty of time. No one has any cabs. And everything is all good. There's no rush. So again, I'm just going to look for a target here. Someone who's nice and easy and stationary. And not going to be killed by a friendly. Oh, we actually got a convoy of units down here. So that's who exactly I'm going to go after. And when I come off my whip, I'm going to line up on these two guys kind of bumping into one another. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my cross here directly above. Just tiny little bit. And when I get to this point, and I'm going to hit my space bar. Now that was about two tank heights above the target that I was aiming at, at that dive. I'm going to come back around again using my C key. And I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. It's no more complicated than that. And it just takes a little bit of practice to get your bomb angle right. So again, I'm lining up this guy right here. I've got my crosshair just above him. I'm going to hit my space bar, drop my bomb, and then I'm going to pull off. And he's dead. <laughs> Easy as that. Never aim directly for your target. Generally, you'll drop the bomb a little bit too short. But it really depends on the angle that you're dropping your bombs from. That was a pretty steep angle for the P-47. So that generally works out well whenever I do that. Right, let's hop out and get another one. Okay, so bomb and run number three. I'm just going to fly over the battlefield again and pick off with some units. Now, a couple of things that I notice a lot of people do is, one, they'll dive absolutely far too steep. They'll be going too fast and they'll just pancake into the ground. Just try and avoid that. As well as that, it's really important to pick your targets for bombs. Don't ever bomb a light tank like a Puma or something that you can actually gun, especially open top vehicles. You want to save your bombs for big hefty targets that are causing your teammates problems. This particular individual right here is a bit of a chungus boy, so we're coming in on him. So bombs away, I'm leading him. And he's driven right onto them. So you'll notice there that I dropped my bombs a lot more sooner, just because I knew that guy was driving. Generally, if you want to be successful with your bomb drops, find something that's static. But if you've got a moving target, don't be scared to, to drop your bombs and try and lead that target. So like this KV-1 on the road, KV-1 is notoriously difficult to actually kill. So I'm leading this guy. I'm roughly guesstimating where he's going to go. My bomb's off. I'm pulling off. And he's driven right into it. The more you practice doing this, the better you'll become. You might not get the hang of it the first few tries that you do this. But I promise you, after about an hour of doing this or so, you should be pretty good to go. Okay, we're back on another server. And now I'm going to cover low level bombing. Now, this is a much harder thing to do because you're moving a lot faster and you're a lot closer to the ground. So your window of opportunity for actually dropping the bombs on target is a lot narrower. What we want to do is get our speed up. We just want to keep our whip full on. We want to be looking for targets. Another thing as well is it's obviously going to be harder for us to spot anything. But now that Gaijin has also added the fact that bombs will impact tanks now, this is actually a lot easier to do. Sometimes you can actually hit the tank with the bomb, it will stick to them, and they'll definitely die. <laughs> okay, I've spotted my target here. I'm going to come in low level. Just bear in mind that your bombs will be traveling at the same speed as your plane. So, whenever they fall off, gravity takes hold, and they're still doing about 600 kph. <laughs> so, you generally will get away with it, so long as you're good enough at hitting your spacebar at the right timing. This will definitely take the most amount of time to practice. It's one of the more difficult things to do. There's another Churchill here. I'm just going to fly directly above him, hit my space bar, and there we go. I hit him right in the back of the turret with that bomb, and he's down and out. A lot of air, uh, sorry, a lot of tanks don't expect pilots to do this, and it's a really good sneaky way if you're coming across treetops and you're trying to take out somebody that's actually trying to pay attention to aircraft, such as an SPAA. And finally, this is going to be the hardest type of bombing, at least for me. That's high-level bombing. So basically, coming straight down onto our enemy. You'll normally need to do this, again, if there's an SPAA up that can't look directly up at you. But again, the reason this is going to be difficult is, one, actually spotting the target, and two, dropping your bombs accurately, and then pulling off on time. So we actually want to be aiming directly at the tank this time. We then want to drop our bombs. I'm actually going for the Panzer IV, not the Sherman. And then pull off. And we got both of them, luckily. Again, we're just going to go straight back up again. 
really the other bit of advice I can give you here is not to roll your plane at all you want to just try and keep as steady as you possibly can whenever you're coming straight down so I've got another enemy tank right here this one in particular I'm coming straight down on him I want to lead him quite a good bit bombs out and then we're off and right underneath so that is going to be your hardest one to practice but if you can get that locked down you can pretty much bomb safely and keep your energy pretty high in order to kind of keep aircraft off your tail and of course SPA shooting up at you vertically okay now we're going to advance to the most difficult tutorial of today this is unguided rockets now the reason I've chosen the Firefly in particular is because number one it's got quite a lot of rockets on here and as well as that they're very difficult to aim because they're outset on the wings now although it says we have 16 rockets we technically only have eight because I'm only going to be aiming off of my right hand side wing in order to get kills now we're going to have to get particularly close to our enemy in order to get kills with these and because of that if we aim in between i.e right in the center of our plane both rockets are going to go either side of our target and we're not going to get a hit so I'm really going to be aiming off the right hand side indicator and that's how we're going to get our enemy tanks so we don't want to be going too fast with the rockets I'm going to aim for this Japanese tank right here we're going to come in nice and level and I'm going to aim off the right wing and we hit him right center mass so we're going to pull off full whip and we're going to engage a different target in fact we're going to go for that Sherman right there so I'm going to get us into a steeper angle if it was an SPAA fire now you probably wouldn't want to do this you go a little bit further out but nothing shooting at me currently so this is what we're going for I need to be very wary of these trees here so I'm going to launch a little bit further back so leading the target off the right wing rockets out and I just clipped this cupola unfortunately didn't get the kill but that's still a good crit so a successful rocket still nonetheless now the good thing with rockets is you get a lot more of them than you do with bombs when you're in a, a vehicle like this so you've got much more opportunity to do damage such as kill assists and kills themselves so this is always a good option plus it's really satisfying I want to try and kill this Sherman through the front it's a cast hole boy so coming in again aiming off the right wing rockets out and I hit just below not enough to do him any damage the server here is a little bit laggy I think it's in the US and I forgot to change it off so that might be contributing to that as well there's a little bit of delay before the rockets come off the rails so just making excuses at this point we are going to go for this panzer right here oh never mind no he's dead we're going straight back for the Sherman again off the right wing and hit him up our front plate and he's gone I think a lot of people are going to ask me why I'm not using flaps it's just to try and keep my speed and energy up a wee bit flaps generally tend to drain it down just a smidge it can be enough to mean life or death I don't think I might get a shot on this guy let's see if we hit the building rockets out and he's gone rockets will definitely take the most practice I'm going to try and kill multiple targets in one run here but you can see how I'm aiming off just the one wing it's the most important technique to know I don't think I'll get two at one here so we'll just go for this guy I missed him there just because I was rolling a little bit not by much I'm a bit out of practice with these things so getting a, getting a hit every single shot is, uh, <laughs> is pretty unrealistic let's go for this Sherman that's bumped into this T-34 I hit him but it didn't actually do him any damage because it hit his machine gun barrel that will happen quite a lot by the way with any rocket bombs obviously negate that I want to choose the Sherman once more and uh, we got a double hit we hit the Sherman and the T-34 right we're going to go spawn another firefly and try again now we're going to talk about crosshair placement you probably noticed that depending on the steepness of your angle of attack it's going to depend on wherever you're aiming on the crosshair here now the crosshair itself is pretty deceiving it does not compensate for the roll of your plane you really need to be level as much as you possibly can 
once you get used to this though you'll definitely just be aiming off where your rockets are on your wing and you won't be actually focused on your crosshair at all so picking a target again we're going a little bit too fast that's okay we'll bleed off some speed this t-34 i'm sure is still alive aiming off our right wing a little bit too low but that's okay we'll just try and keep our speed up i generally tend to find the faster that i'm doing this the more i get hits with my rockets the more kind of slowed down i am and reserved the worse that i do but you'll get your own technique eventually this is just to set you on the right path I'll come back in for the t-34 again so i'm in halfway up the cross here and to the right hand side and there we go a nice clean kill that time around only took three attempts i would generally tend to avoid attacking kv1s with rockets they don't really respond well to damage from these things but for medium tanks, no problem at all. For this Chinu. And there we go. Another nice clean kill again. Now for this final run, we're going to get a little bit more aggressive. And I'm just going to aim off the wings. And just try and get some quick kills in. Backwards and forwards. As good as I can. Pick the nice easy squishy targets first. Make sure I don't hit too low. We also had that Panzer IV there. Let's swing back around again. To kill Panzer IVs with like uh, side skirts, we're going to have to hit them from almost top down. We'll try and get a good shot on them though. And see what happens. Lining up on the right hand side of the crosshair. Letting the rocket go. There goes kill number two. We're cutting the grass just to show off. <laughs> the steeper your angle, the less time you have to pull back off again. I can see another Sherman down here. We're going to try and hit this guy. Oh no, let's go for this Panzer IV again. It's stuck, even. Even off the right wing. A little bit too much lead. We still hit him, though. We come back around again. Just keep this flow here. Just keep an eye out on the keyboard controls down the bottom i'm actually not pressing too many keys as you can probably see tapping my throttle every now and again is about the gist of it holding c is the main one right on his turret cheek and the he was enough to go down and hit his ammo back round again just keeping an eye out i've got habits of looking for targets on the ground there's a couple of panzer fours see if we can get cocky here Off the right hand side. Trip on that guy. May hit this post. Oh no, we lag into the ground. <laughs> but I think you guys get the idea. Just try and figure out your own technique. Whether you want to take your time. Or whether you want to get aggressive. Now lastly, we're going to move on to guided munitions. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the FJ4B. But of course you can use your G91 or SK60. Whichever vehicle that you have. We're going to open up our controls here as well. And we're going to talk about the control of the armament firstly we're going to click on weaponry here and we're going to look at the yaw axis for aimed weapons now this is exactly how i have this set up using alt and d and alt and a make sure all of these things match on your settings as well and the same goes for pitch axis too okay we're here in the fj and we've got five bullpups one thing that's very important to know is whenever you're zoomed in whatever button you use for that whenever you let an, a nord or a bullpup off the rail if you let go of the zoom button and you have alt held in, you won't be able to zoom again unless you let go of alt, which relieves all control of your missile, so you don't want that to happen. So make sure you're zoomed in the entire way if you need to see it long distance. We have a massive cluster of enemy tanks over here. I'm going to keep an eye on it. And we're going to send a boop up on its way. So keeping myself zoomed in, keeping an eye on my airspeed as well. We're going to let off another one. Plenty of time. And we're going to pull off. Generally with bullpups you want to not actually hit the tank. You want to hit right next to it. Ideally at this side. Now pull back up. Look back over. And we're going to attack the same group again. So hit my one key to launch a missile. Hold it on to alt. And guide it in with my WAS keys. There we go. Double kill. Let's see if we can get this guy at the end. There we are. Now we got one more bullpup left. Oh, 
<laughs> He's bumped into each other. Make sure you get plenty of separation. You'll notice that my speed is really high here still. I'm going to pull back around. Only two buttons I'm holding on to are C and my shift key. Zooming back in. Put the missile off the rail. A little bit blinded by this one. And there we go. Another one down. Okay, I'm going to pull off. We're going to do some extreme long range shots with these. I'll see you guys once we're back around facing the battlefield and we're rearmed. Just another thing to note. Obviously, the faster you're going, the less time it's going to take for you to get close to your target. But the slower you're going, the more vulnerable you're going to be against enemy anti-air. And of course, jets too. So we've got quite a few targets out over here. I'm going to launch over this way and direct my missile over to the left where I can see this tank reversing right now. There's another one right there too, who's actually just getting shot at. And that way we're not flying directly at something like an anti-air while it's firing at us. There's actually an anti-air down there. I saw a bot spawn one of them for a little while, so I'm actually a little bit scared. So, I'm going to approach him the way I know how. I'm going to shoot him off the corner of the screen. I prefer to go to the left, I don't know why. It's just a preference. So, missile away. And there we go. So this tutorial really covers the basics on how to bomb, rocket and of course guided missile. There are still other things to cover such as cannon casts and of course heavy cannon casts. As well as that, stuff like advanced techniques on how to swoop down on enemies better and be more efficient with your use of your aircraft. But hopefully after today's tutorial you'll be able to drop bombs a little bit more accurately and hopefully pull up before you hit the ground. I assume as well that sometime in the future more and more different munitions will be added to the game. Perhaps some new game mechanics as well that will make this tutorial irrelevant. But for now, it's pretty current and it should help you out quite a bit, so long as you learn something new. Now this is the second tutorial video I've ever done and if you enjoyed it, I'll definitely do more. Just remember to hit that subscribe button, leave a like on this video if it at least taught you something new. And leave a comment if I've missed something out that you don't understand or you want to see something else in the future, let me know. And to all my patrons over on Patreon, support me over there. If it wasn't for you guys, stuff like this just wouldn't be a possibility. So a huge thanks to your monthly contributions. And to all the tier 3 folk that get a shout out. That is of course Matthew S, Jesse Mills, Thumpin' Bunny, Kayla White, Houndy, Gateway, Bilal, Trash Panda, Raj, Zema, Kinnisol Lord. Viking Gods, Warpig, The Firepiper, Sexy, Vanian, Yogbo, Justin Darlin, Big Beard and Moose, Sha, Fork, J Tormy, and the Fearsome Scotsman. And of course to everyone who watches my videos and supports the channel, thank you guys very much, much love, and bye bye